Let's take a look at how you find antiderivatives with Maple. Here are some standard antiderivative problems. The first one is to evaluate an antiderivative. The second one is to find an antiderivative that passes through a point. And then I have just two more indefinite integral problems. Now the basic idea is to simply type the function and we'll right click. So for part A, the function is x squared times the fifth root of something. Well, that would be x cubed plus 16 raised to the power of 1 over 5. So there's the function, x cubed to the 16th, or plus 16th to the 1 fifth times x squared. Now, like I've been doing over and over and over again, I'll select it, right click, and get the context menu, and right there in the middle is integrate with respect to the variable x. And I can see that the command for integration is just int with a comma and the x. This is sort of like the dx term. And it tells me that the antiderivative is 5 eighteenths times x cubed plus 16 to the 6 fifths power. Notice that Maple doesn't put an integration constant. It doesn't include a plus c. Maple will assume that you will remember to do the plus c. And that ends up becoming important on certain kinds of problems. For example, let's take part b. Part b says to find the antiderivative of x cubed times sine of 2x. Well, let me first get x cubed times the sine of 2x. Entered. To get an antiderivative, that's just what an integration is. So I'm going to go and select this, right click, and choose integrate with respect to x. And that right there happens to be an antiderivative. But it's not the one I'm looking for. Because if I were to go and take this and plug in x value 0, let's see, I'll evaluate it at x equals 0. Then I come out with an output of 0 instead of an output of 3. So this isn't the right function. However, if I take this and add 3 to it, let me take this function right here, which is the function on line 4, so I'm going to include a line label, and add 3 to that function. I would get this. This is another antiderivative of x cubed sine of 2x. But now if I take this antiderivative and plug in x equals 0 into it, then I get an output of 3. So this is the antiderivative who passes through the point 0, 3. So that's your very basics of working with antiderivatives in Maple. Maple will find you a particular antiderivative, but you're going to have to remember the plus c in case you need to change the constant. The other two examples are just to show you what can go weird with Maple. For example, if we were to take sine of x squared, which isn't terribly hard to, or to write down at least, I can select it and integrate it, and when I attempt to do that, Maple spits out 1 half times the square root of 2 times the square root of pi times Fresnels of stuff. And you might be asking, what the heck does that thing mean? What is this Fresnels right here? Whenever Maple gives you weird output, you can always ask it with a question mark and type in Fresnels. And what Maple will do is it will launch a help menu. And it will tell me right here that Fresnels is something called the Fresnel sign function. And it describes the Fresnel sign function as being some kind of, well, antiderivative of sine of x squared. The point of this whole thing is that if Maple is sometimes capable of integrating, but it will write the answers in terms of functions we're just not familiar with. So don't blindly copy everything Maple spits out at you. If it's writing it down in terms of a function you don't know about, well, for all intents and purposes, you don't know this antiderivative. I don't know what the Fresnel sign function is, and you're not likely to find out about it until the end of Calc 2. So keep that in mind. Maple can integrate a lot more things than we can, but it will sometimes write the answers in terms of things we've never seen before. How about this more nasty function right here? That's the function, the square root of the sine of 1 over x squared. So there's that function. If I select it, right click, and choose integrate, then Maple will actually just spit back the exact integral. Whenever Maple spits back this, it means it cannot find an antiderivative. Any of the tricks we learned in class, or any of the tricks we'll ever learn in class, are not good enough to solve this particular guy right here. So as powerful as Maple is, even it's not perfect. And those are the very, very basics of integration.